Hi guys and welcome to part two. So in part one we sliced up the blueprint so that we had four views so that we could set up the box which is what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to be setting up the blueprint box. Now before we get started I should um, emphasize how important it is to do research on the model that you do plan on building. Um, sometimes you don't have blueprints available so you gather as many photos as you can. It's still a good idea to gather as many photos as you can so that you know you could see it in different angles and you know um, get to what I what I call get to know your model so what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna build a box and it doesn't really matter what size it is just click and drag it for now and it shows you the dimensions here now these dimensions are in meters what I did was I went to customize and then unit setup and I prefer the metric as that's usually um, the dimensions that we get when we look at Wikipedia or something else so in this case we're looking at the Schwerer Panzer blah blah. Sorry, I'm, I'm not German. I don't speak any German at all and uh, I can't pronounce it. So if we're taking a look at six wheelers, it's this page and it looks like the length is pretty standard for them all. So 5.9 meters, 2.2 meters and 2.9 meters. Now I have a really bad memory so I'm just going to take a look at it from here and enter it in. So 5.9, 2.2 and 2.9. Great. Now we are done with Wikipedia. So if we press Alt W, it'll increase the uh, viewport that we're looking at and we see that our box is there. If we press W, we get this arrow functionality thing and then we could just move the box to the middle. And then if you take a look at all four viewports again by pressing Alt W and then clicking on this, you'll be zoomed in for everything. Now, if we take a look, uh, if you press the F2, F3, and F4 keys, you'll have the different options. F4 removes the line, F3 adds or removes the fill, and F2 does something else, which I don't recall at this present time, but play around with it. So I prefer having the lines shown and the fill shown. Also, if you press G, you'll get rid of the grid, which is just less lines on your screen. So here we have the blueprint box. Right now, this is what we call a mesh. Um, if we take a look at the options, you have to select it, right click, and then convert to. There's mesh, poly, and patch, and NURBS. Th the important thing for this tutorial is really the poly. So we'll convert it to an editable poly, and we'll rename it here and call it Blueprints. Great, so now we have that done. What converting it to a poly allows you to do is it allows you to collect, uh, select the vertices, which are these single dots, uh, the edges, which are clearly the edges, um, and the faces. So we'll be working with that a lot. So if you press the six key, it'll just clear out that selection. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add those, uh, those blueprints that we had cut in earlier. So if you press the M key, you'll see that I've already added it in the first slot, and this is how I've done it. So let's, let's select the second slot, and we'll make it a square in shape, and we'll increase the self-illumination to 100. And then in the diffuse row, click on that empty gray box, click bitmap. So what I loaded earlier was the front, so now we'll load the rear, hit the up arrow and get back out. Select this, because what this does is this shows the texture in the viewport. And let's just rename this for our own sake so that it's easier to see what it is we're selecting. All right, and this should be good to go. So let's just move this aside, and then we'll take a look at what it is we're adding. Now, typically, you don't want to leave the blueprint box like this, so we're going to have to prepare just a little bit more. Um, I found that if I just apply it and then flip the faces, the textures themselves will get reversed, or sorry, the blueprints themselves will get reversed. So what I do now is I select, uh, I select all the vertices and then I break them. And I know this is kind of tedious and if anybody knows a better way of doing this, by all means let me know. But uh, then we're going to select the face and let's say this is the front of the vehicle, right? What we're going to want is we're going to want to put the rear blueprint here and you will see the reason for that in just a minute. So that's the rear of the blueprint. And let's put the front on the other side. Select that, apply the front. And now what I do is I select that face, press E for this, and then select this for percentage movements. It really helps you with the accuracy of it all. And then I rotate it by 180 degrees. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side by 180 degrees. And now you'll see that the front now shows the front blueprint and the rear 
will show the rear blueprint, even though it was slightly counterintuitive. I hope that makes sense. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the other blueprints as well, so bear with me as I do this. So I believe it's going to be on this side. Let's try that out. Perfect. Flip it by 180 degrees. And then let's get rid of this face because we don't need it. We're also not going to need this face because we don't have a bottom view for the blueprint. We are going to need this face, however. So let's just flip it by 180 degrees for now. And then add that blueprint there. Top, go up, do that, remission 100%, add it. Now this is where we sometimes run into trouble. As you can see, the way that uh, this measures the, um, the top view isn't necessarily the same way that uh, the blueprint did. So it's a very simple fix. Rotate it by 90 degrees, select all the vertices, do a quick weld on them. Now all of these vertices over here, there used to be two they're now welded. Same thing with these ones and on all the corners. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a target weld for these. And just click and drag until they are in place. It's like playing connect the dots. And there we go. We have our blueprint ready. So this is what we're going to be using to model our model. Alright, so one thing that we end up doing a lot if we just leave it like this is we end up selecting the blueprint quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to freeze the blueprint so that we can't accidentally select it. I prefer the color blue for it because it is a blueprint. So right click, go to properties, click freeze, and then say unclick the frozen in gray so that you can actually still see the textures. Great. And now we've got our blueprints all set up and we are ready to go to actually start modeling. So save your model by hitting control S if this is the second time you're saving. Otherwise, go to file, save as. And I will see you guys in the next lesson.